bastard! See the rabbits, Margaret? Yes. Go on, run out and give them this. And mind the rooster. Come here, Arthur. Look at you. Ah. <laughs> Where's your mum today, Margaret? She's not well. Jesus is sending us another baby. Today? No, she's just sick today. <laughs> Dada? Come here. Margaret. Come here, you wee rabbit. Oh. Take after him now, love. Quickly, out of the back gate. Oh, Cleaver. Dada, don't. You said you'd only kill him as a last resort. This is a last resort. Topsy, there are no pets in my backyard, just ingredients. I didn't really dance as such. I just walked around the stage in time to music and dropped a shoulder strap at the end. A shoulder strap? The corset had shoulder straps. It was an Aurora Clorinda and you can get these special details. But mate, Child, what was going through your mind? I think I thought somebody might stop me. I couldn't believe I'd be allowed. Plenty of things are allowed in life. But that doesn't mean that you're obliged to do them. But I was obliged, Father. I needed the money. You took money. You took money for dancing on a stage in front of men in your underclothes. It was all in a good cause. And you want absolution because you feel guilty? No, Father. Because I don't. Nobody else has meat every day. He's obsessed with food. It's nothing to do with food. He just likes cutting things up. I don't mind the vetting. If there'd have been more vetting coming in, then we could have afforded chopped meat. It'd still be full of lovely rabbits in the backyard. I think it's time we put our foot down. Be a while. that. The finishing touch. Shot the lorries! What are you looking for, Dad? A pencil! On the mantelpiece next to His Majesty. Who asked you? It is final. You heard the doctor. But there'll be no going back. There's no going forward otherwise. Mrs. Raisendale. Yes? There's a rattle in here. What should I do with it? The same as you're doing with everything else. I can see to this for you, Mr. Brazendale. No, no, I'll do it. I promised my wife. Um, I, I think it's ivory, sir. What? 
colour are your rabbits? White. My name is Domingo Hennessy. Miss. Moss. Can I come in? My father's not home. You'll have to wait to speak to him. There is rabbits. I don't mind. Do you mind if I carry on? I'm on piecework breaks and I got behind yesterday because I had to do the washing twice. No, please, don't stop. Truffles today. Some with cherry brandy and some with creme de menthe. I worked a commission for vehicles at Vienna. Do you send them on an aeroplane? No, the shop's on London Road. I know. I buy their tangerine creams for my mother. I make them. And the rose and violet ones. She thinks the tangerine kind do a good. They've got fruit in them. Did you know it's only oil? Comes in a bottle. Citroen 51. I won't tell her if you don't. <laughs> Mr. Veagle's got a contract with Cunard Lines. They serve them on the ships with Turkish coffee. Have I got cocoa on my face? No, you're spotless. Hi, Ref. Which one do you want? Which would be best? Not sure any of them will taste especially nice. They've been made on dandelions. I don't want to eat it. I'm a magician. What are you going to do? Sort in half? If you just want them for tricks, then they're all lovely. In which case, I should like to take all three. Huh. And I hope you will allow me to take your daughter to the picture house. On Saturday. What's your name? Domingo Hennessy. You're a tag then. Come here, you. Hey, yeah. You want a crate for these rabbits? You want to carry them right now? I'd be obliged if you could lend me a crate. And if you'd let me take your daughter to the picture house. Take your bloody rabbits and get out of my backyard. I paid you for them yet. Do you have change with 10 bob notes? No. Go on. Oh, for pity's sake, why don't you just ignore them? Everybody else does. Chips. Iris didn't give us any tea. I think it's meant to be a form of protest. You can walk out just this once, but you are not going to the picture house! Why can't I go to the picture house, Dada? Because they are showing the idol dancer and it is full of lusty natives! <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? How do I look? Billy! Nervous. I'm a pale. I'd pinch my cheeks if I were you. Why did you say you'd go? I wanted to save all the rabbits. And he was wearing gloves. Nobody else just sat around here. How do you know he hasn't got a false hand? Went there. Yes, she did. You can hardly complain. You encouraged her. Because I wanted her to see she won't enjoy it. Then she won't entertain going out with him again. She'll never fly the coop. She only thinks she wants to. Uh, has this been sugared? Two spoons. Well, you could have stirred it. Cheer up. At least he didn't take her to the picture house.
father once told me that nuns didn't have legs. Only wheels beneath the habits, so that Satan could propel them around. <laughs> <laughs> you married my mother in there, at the side altar. Without flowers or music, Mama wore brown. Dad has not been over the threshold since. Not even when me and my sisters were baptised. Just you and your sisters? Mama brought the girls up in the faith. Dad had got the boys and they were Orange Lodge. Mama used to say that's what marriage was all about. Coming to an acceptance. Yes. So, Mama won really. Because there were the three of us and only two boys. And then just Billy after Walter died. In the war? Yeah. Fashion deal. I was in Mesopotamia. I got a blighty one in 16. Is it very bad? Did you get invalided out? I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. No. You're not. When I'm at home, sometimes I don't say anything for ages. They call me the quiet one. There's all sorts of conversations going round and round me head. Mine too. Will you come out with me again, Iris? Yes. What made you want to be a magician? Because when I came back from the war, nothing was the way I wanted it. Or anyone expected. I suppose I wanted to alter things. And it could only be by magic. It's Dada on the pianola. He tends to pedal a bit fast. <laughs> You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> 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 She was laughing. If you ever hurt her, I'll kick you to death. Cook asked for the opinion on the coffee beans, madam. The new blend been sent round from Henderson's. It smells delicious. I do like being well again. You do look much brighter. Change of lipstick always helps. I left the old one in the little bathroom. You may take it and keep it if you wish. Oh, thank you very much, madam. I suppose where you come from, women have them just like that. I have what, Mrs. Brazendale? Babies. How many did your mother have? Five, madam. All born alive? By the grace of God. Even Walter and Ruby, and they were twins. And did she die in childbirth? I don't think you ever told me. No, she had appendicitis. We got the doctor out, but he couldn't save her. She passed away on the kitchen table. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry. It isn't a secret, Mrs. Brazendale. You may tell cook the beans are nice enough, but I'd prefer a darker roast. All night. Oh, they're still damp. I'm sorry, I forgot. What are you doing to your hair? Curling it. I'm going to meet the bingo. You said you'd only see him once a week. I keep on top of things. I'm still managing to do me chocolates. Are there any mess ships this week? I'm sorry, I'm. Saving him for Domingo. Is that 
them in there. These are tangerine creams. He's, he's asked me to meet his mother. And twice. He makes it look as though he is. He's good with the children too. They put a smile on his face. Not a thing I ever thought I'd see again. Not after the war. Because he was wounded. He told you then? Yeah, he did. He obviously doesn't like to talk about it much. There's no need, is there? What's done is done. You're a good girl, Iris. You can't love Domingo Hennessy. You don't know him. I felt as though I did. From the minute I met him, I just seemed to know exactly who he was. He'll change. They all change. Once they stop putting their best foot forward. Then you'll know if it's love or not. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Is that from the Bible? No. Paul Graves' Treasury. Mama's poetry book. Really? Poetry is written by dead men in empty rooms. Whose side are you on? I'm on the side of reason. That's easy to say. You've never been in love. I've read about it in magazines. When the time comes, I'll be ready. These are for you. Violet. Don't you like them? My mother was going to call me Violet. But I had long legs. She thought she ought to go for a slightly taller flower. <laughs> this is what you call large thread. 217 degrees. This is called small pearl. Three degrees hotter. Next is large pearl. I sometimes burn my lips. <laughs> Don't burn your lips. keep them forever now. Nobody ever bought me flowers before. I want us to be married, Iris. You making a game of me? No. You'll never guess what the company have sent me. Braziers, the branching out. No aspect of the female form need go undisciplined. Would you mind leaving us alone for a moment, please? Have you been upset any? Your hands are shaking. Am I right, Ruby? This has nothing to do with you. I just proposed. Marriage? What do you mean it's nothing to do with me? Do you want me to show him the door? No. No, I don't. Is that a yes, Iris? I don't know. Well, do you love him, Iris? And does he love you? I don't know whether he loves me. I'd die for you. How are you going to tell Dada? Domingo's coming back tonight. He's going to ask him for my hand. Have you any idea what this is going to do to him? More of an idea than you. I'm the one waiting on him hand, foot and finger all the hours that God sends. Tempting his palate, watching his face, counting the flaming storm clouds. You don't have to go barging off and get married just to get away from him. You could have got a job at the laundry or the bobbin works. 
That would have got you out the house. And you still could have kept an eye on things. It's not about me getting out of the house. It's about me wanting to be with Domingo. Well, I'm glad it's all so cut and dried. <sighs> Why do you want the cocoa tin? That's the money we're saving for our grave. There's more than three pounds in here. We only need half a crown. What for? Me? We've got a plan ahead. Half a crown? All right, this doesn't stand a chance. Stands a chance of what? Scrubbing Domingo Hennessy's floors, cooking his dinners and brushing his top hat. Not everyone sees Iris as an unpaid slave. I happen to think she wants better. And so does Domingo. So they'll do me. And what's the half a crown for? I've not told Domingo that Dad had took the pledge. He might bring something like whiskey as a gift. And another thing. We don't want any undergarments on display. <laughs> What's this? Two pounds of lamb for there. put three decent dinners on the stage. This is for you, sir. You think a better offer's gonna oil the wheels? I came here to tell you how much I respect and admire your eldest daughter. And to ask for a hand in marriage, sir. Do you not think this is all a wee bit sudden? We are completely sure of one another. I see no reason for delay. Where were you born? Radcliffe, near Bury, sir. I lived there with my mother until last year. And where do you live now? Medici Street. We have a house with all the proper plumbing. Iris will have a very comfortable home. Money? Four pounds a week or more since I took up my current trade. Which is that of our conjurer? I worked in a paper mill before I volunteered. I wanted to better myself. So, you had the nerve to serve your country then? You know that. She told you that. Has the man not got a mouth on him? I fought at Luz and Vimy Ridge, sir. And then I went out on the Turkish campaign. Huh. What were you like we'll be on it? I could tell you, sir, but there are women present. So? Why don't you go out and pull up the park railings? Huh? And pale me on a six-foot spike, why don't you? Pierce my heart! Go on! Just do it! Mr. Moss, I will not let you take my daughter away. Not from her home, and not from her family. She's not used to any other life. She'd weather away with you. She would fade. Oh, come on, Dada. She'd not be moving seven streets away. If you take Iris through that door, you take the light out of my house. You kill us all by infinite degrees. Then I won't do it. What do you mean, you won't do it? I mean, I won't marry her. <laughs> I'll still walk out with you. We'll see each other twice a week, more. But I will not be the cause of him doing this to you. You would never be free, Iris. 
I will marry your daughter, Mr. Moss. Without your blessing, our marriage would be a curse on her. down on the family melodrama? No. I'm not sure it ever will be. Not as long as we're related. If I were to stay down here, would you join me in a glass? I, I don't touch strong drinks, sir. My father's a man of passionate convictions. This isn't strong drink, May. It's fine wine. It's not the same thing at all. Stop crying any time you like, Ruby. I thought everything was going to change. I thought you were going to leave us. What would Mama have said? She hated Rouse. You should have thought about that before you put your spoke in. Anyway, you've got what you wanted. Might as well dry your eyes. Don't be bitter, Iris. It isn't in your nature. You don't know what's in my nature. I should have liked siblings. My wife often says the same thing. I sometimes think that's what makes us happy. We were both only children. And then we met, and we weren't. No good, though. Too many empty rooms. I love empty rooms. Do you? I remember being read a book when I was at school, and there was a breakfast room mentioned in it. And I thought, a room? A whole room just for drinking your cup of tea and eating a little bit of bread and scrape? <laughs> and for the rest of the day, there'd be nothing and no one in it. Just the sunshine coming through the glass. I think of that sometimes when I do the one here. And I stand in the middle and stretch my arms out, touching nothing, just listening to the hush. I've often wondered if you have a secret life. Oh, I'd kill for a secret life. But I work long hours and I haven't got the time. Don't you ever do anything in the evenings? Don't you go out dancing or anything like that? No, I'm too tired. You don't have to finish your wine. You can go to bed. Would you mind, sir? Good night. Night, sir. Concerned, but I wanted so much more. Children. I look at children sometimes, and something inside me just turns over like a fish. Well, that is a natural and wonderful instinct. The trouble is, when I opened the door to Domingo, I felt exactly the same. Is that a natural and wonderful instinct? To look at another person, a grown man, and think, you are something that I want. I've always believed that the love between a man and a woman is a living image of the love that God has for his church, and that it's probably impossible to feel the true depth of that love 
without having experienced the joy of marriage. That must make your job quite difficult. It's not without its consolations. Should I try and find consolation in this, Father? Should I try and make it a sacrifice for God? I will try if you say I should. No, I'm not going to say that. God. Should we not be sitting here? Should I have come to confessional? No. No, because you haven't sinned. Morning, Mr. Moss. Gentlemen. Yeah, morning, Becky. Go on, then. Iris has had a proposal of marriage, and you are flying in the face of God. Well, whose God would that be then? <coughs> there is only one God, Mr. Moss. As well you know. Everything else is just a matter of opinion. And that is a matter of opinion in itself. <sighs> Besides, the conjurer has withdrawn his application for her hand. And is that a source of satisfaction to you? It means my daughter is free to do her duty. And what would you define as a duty, Mr. Moss? Cooking and washing and waiting on you. Tending to her brother and her sisters. Iris is my eldest child. She was her mother's right hand. She does things her mother's way. Mr. Moss, you have three girls. And I am going to say two things to you. One, you will never replace your wife. To try to do so with her daughter is an insult to her memory. Well, that was all. <sighs> I don't know what the Pope can think about this. Where are you going with that? To the poor box. And two. Have you never heard of compromise? <laughs> he did you there, Moss. <laughs> Domingo Hennessy, I despise you. You are a papist and you pull handkerchiefs out of your hat for a living. But. You have a fine eye for that which is beyond all calculable price. And, if I give my firstborn to you, she can marry before an altar lit with candles wearing white, which is more than I can ever give her more. Is that it, sir? No. We need her back for an hour every day to cook our dinner. not in favour of anything subdued. This will be a short engagement and keeping it quiet might just look hole and corner. If it's to do with funds, I have a little nest egg. Are you suggesting we can't afford to give the girl a decent send-off? No, sir. And we do have a little nest egg of our own. We call it the cocoa tin money. We call it the grave money. And we won't be needing it anymore. Iris will be buried with Domingo now. And we're just supposed to make our own arrangements. Ignore it. I won't take the grave money, miss. You will. We're going to need new clothes. Sherry trifle. And a ham. My employer's entertaining a lot. You find I know the form. You'll not fit many in this small parlour. Well, there's always the yard. I like the fresh air. You'll be getting enough of that outside the church. Dada, you must 
come inside the church. You can't just stop outside. I can't go in a Catholic church. You went in for your wedding. Make him see reason, Billy. I can't come in either. You'll just have to walk up the aisle on your own. What, you think that it doesn't matter? That I don't mind that you're both bigots? You've made her cry again. I'm not crying. I'm just disgusted. Would you be wanting a formal bouquet? And how do you propose we pay for that? I'll be quite happy carrying Mama's missile. I'm sorry, Domingo. It's like punching Judy only with more puppets. <laughs> Close the door. Why? I thought you might want to kiss me. People do kiss when they're engaged and we never have. I want you wearing white inside and out, Iris. One kiss wouldn't be the ruin of me. Crispy bits. What did you get? Fish cake. Rockefeller's missing eh? Honest to God. You've got a face on you like a jar of worms. The grave money matters, Billy. The way you say that nothing else will change. That Iris and May and I will always be together. I just get so sick of endings, Billy. Always endings and takings away. Iris isn't ending anything. She's starting something new. I'd love to start something new. But she's taken us away from how things used to be. <laughs> when we were kids and came swimming. Is it hard for you to watch? All the splashing in the water? Yes. Is it hard for you? I'm giving the bat to our birth, but... I can live with this. What if this wedding, this whole thing with Domingo, what if this is Iris' Olympic Games? What if this is hair coming first, hair being picked to shine? I just, I never thought the past could hold so much. And if we can't stay there, I don't know where we're going next. I know where you're going next. Anything in particular? That it won't rain on the day? That we can stretch to proper dresses and then make the ham go round? That you'll forgive me? Take her. I mean it. We were doing it together, Ruby. Well, we're doing this together now. Do you need me 
need to do some mounting, madam. No, I've been clearing the wardrobes in my dressing room. I thought you might like these. But some of these things are from Worth. I can't accept them. Well, you accepted my lipstick. You seem to have accepted Sir Brownie's cigarettes. But I can't take the things you wear in bed. I never wear any of them in bed. My daughter is to be married. I wish her to have a formal bouquet. We start at 15 shillings for a bunch of pinks, artistically arranged. Which are the pinks? By your feet. What about them? Arams commence at two pounds, sir. I'm sorry. Do I look as though I can't afford to pay? be able to tell it was a night dress. It was a night dress. It's not a night dress, it's a peignoir. Iris Moss, you could walk up the Isle of Westminster Abbey in this. I know. And it's beautiful. I don't care about it being second hand. Everything we've ever had has been misshaped or made over. Come tomorrow, I'll have something that no one's ever owned before. Something brand new and unspoiled. And absolutely perfect. You romanticising now? I'm getting married in the morning. I'm entitled to romanticise. You really do want all of this, don't you? I want marriage. I want children. And I want to be with a man. I hope Mama can't hear what you're saying. Do you think she'd condemn me if she did? I was born five months after the wedding. Iris! <laughs> Iris! Mine's a cake! Oh, never mind the cake, your dress! He was run over by the brewer's dray. The owner saw it happen. She's away home to get her purse now. Do you need the ether? He needs the gun to shoot it with. If it dies, I don't get paid! Oh, no. No. Oh. Chance to win a fine chicken. Any use to dip the money for the chicken? No. Good luck. What's the purse?
Did you play your nuts off, dollies? He could have killed you. And Iris is getting married in the morning. Hi, much. A couple of guineas. It's enough. It's not enough when you could have lost your eye. And you're filthy. I'm taking you down to the slipper baths. Uh, bugger the slipper baths. Take the rooster home and roast it. I'm going on an errand. Tata. Tata. I got them last night. I don't know what to do with Mama's missile. It's the one she carries on her wedding day. Throwing it, mind. in the ground. I planted bulbs in the pots and in the window box and nothing ever flourished in the shirt except for our children. <laughs> My wife must watch these celebrations from another place today but as I stand here and I look at my firstborn with her sisters. I weep not for the bulbs that did not bloom, for I can look at my daughters and say, these are my lilies. As late as a fire, would you like me to light it? I'm not cold. You shivered. I shivered. I'm not cold. Come here. Is this really what you want, Iris? We're married, aren't we? Close your eyes. You can 
can move now. Oh, to me. Am I disgusting to you? They didn't send people in for nothing. You had to be really hurt. Was it shrapnel? To begin with. After three days in no man's land, it was gangrene. Three days? In the mud? All by yourself? Sunny. I kept praying for maggots because they keep wounds clean. They nibble the poison away. But none came. You don't have to touch Shh. me. Jesus was wounded in his side. Look at me, Iris. matter that you hadn't told me. I thought you could love me as I am. Because you were perfect. I thought you were perfect. You aren't even complete. <laughs> I wanted children. I wanted you. Not this. Oh, you beautiful doll, you ain't me beautiful doll. You won't have to go back. Will, will, will I have to get a divorce? No, 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 not if the marriage wasn't consummated, no. How could it be? She needs a hot drink, Father. Has it been sugar? Two spoons. Two and four pence eighteen. If we had gone for sherry in the trifle, we wouldn't even have that. But we can start saving for our grave again now. How can I ever make amends? Everything's back the way it used to be. Is it? Yes, and that's amends enough. Iris? Domingo sent you this. Your flowers and water and let them go to waste.